Hello, welcome to North Douglas Church Online. I'm Pastor Rod Fair here in Victoria, British Columbia. And we are going to share this Resurrection Day, this Easter celebration uh, with you. And I am excited about it. I am excited to preach about the resurrection of Jesus Christ because I believe that he is the life giver. And that the resurrection that he overcame death in the grave and proved that he has the authority, that he has the ability to give eternal life. And uh, I want to communicate that with you today. I want you to be able to rejoice in all the things that Jesus has done for us. And uh, we, want to, we want to celebrate together in this gift that he gives us. We are going to start with communion today. So I want you to take a few moments. And if you have uh, some juice and uh, some a cracker, some sort of bread, and uh, we're able to share that in a few moments. We're going to start from Jesus' death and what he said about remembering and then we're going to move to the resurrection. And so I just want you to be prepared for that. Let me remind you that all of these messages for the 50-day spiritual adventure about Jesus' journey to Easter are on our social media pages. You can find them on our webpage, YouTube channel, Facebook page, and you can find all of these messages also on podcast. And so if you would like to listen to those, you can make a comment or you can uh, like them or like the page and uh, that will keep you up to date with all of the things that are happening. As part of the 50-day spiritual adventure, we've been encouraging you to post encouraging notes, not only in your home, but also online using the hashtag inspiringyourfaith. And so I want to continue uh, to encourage you in that. I want you to be able to post notes. And if you click on the link, hashtag inspiringyourfaith, uh, under Facebook or Instagram, you will be able to see posts from a number of people that have uh, posted their notes and posted their inspiration and encouragement there. If you have a need of prayer at any time, you can always send a note to us at prayer at northdouglaschurch.com and we will be faithful to pray for you and the need that you make note of there. So let's move on to uh, talking about Jesus and the life that he lived in the journey that he made towards Easter. And in order to do that, we want to start with communion. Communion is a celebration, a, a commemoration, really, of what Jesus has done on the cross. As we talked about the cross, we talked about the sacrifice of Jesus, his body and his blood, and what he gave to us in providing the forgiveness of sin. And so we're so excited about uh, how we can understand it, how it has affected our life. Not that we wanted Jesus to die, but the fact is that we could not pay the price for our own sin. We needed a Savior, and Jesus came to be that Savior. Now, he knew he was making this journey to the cross and also to the resurrection. And so before he went to the cross, he gave this memorial meal, this fulfillment of the Passover to the disciples. And this is what it says in Matthew chapter 26. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. And then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. I want you to take a little bit of cracker and uh, I just want you to remember what Jesus has done for us in offering up his life. Let's take it together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Matthew continues and says, And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood and confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Let's take this cup of juice and drink it together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God Almighty, we just give you thanks for the provision of a Savior, that Jesus is the Messiah for us, and that he has come and delivered us from our sins. We're so grateful for that. So thankful for all that you have done. You know, in, in being thankful, we need to remember what it is that Jesus has done for us, and we need to understand all that he went through because he did offer his body and his blood was shed. There was this trial of pain and suffering that he went through. It was a very real thing that he died. 
And of course, he was crucified and buried, buried in a tomb. And this is what John says in the record about how it came to be that, Jer- uh, that Jesus was buried in the tomb. Said afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spice in long sheets of linen cloth. The place of crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. And so because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. So Jesus died on the cross. And when he had died, this man, Joseph, along with Nicodemus, asked for possession of his body that they might care for him. And so they found this tomb and laid it, laid his body in the tomb. Now, I don't know if you've been to a cemetery lately, but in the cemetery, you will find that it's not the happiest place to be. Now, even if it is a place of peace and rest, there are these things that happen where people are not really joyful. They're not really happy about being in a cemetery. Let me tell you this uh, little humorous story. You see, there was a minister, a priest, and a rabbi that all died at the same time. And they went to heaven and presented themselves before God. And while they were there, just uh, newly uh, come before God in heaven, they were asked this question. They, They were asked this question, what would you like to hear from your family and friends as you as your body lay in the casket? What would you like to hear them say at your funeral? And the minister said, you know, I would like to hear them say that I was a wonderful husband. I was a faithful leader. I was helping people and that I was a great family man. The priest said, well, I would like to hear the people at my funeral say that I was a wonderful teacher, that I was a servant of God who really made a difference in the lives of others. The rabbi said, well, you know, at my funeral, I would like to hear them say, look, he's moving. (laughs) And I know this is a joke. I know that it is just meant to be a humorous little story, but it does draw to our attention a point that is part of human nature. And that is, we don't really want to die. We don't want to die. We would like to live. Our Everything within us cries out for life. And that is an important part of what Easter is about. That's an important part of what Jesus' resurrection is about. Because you can imagine that after Jesus had died on the cross, there were certain people that were there that were close by, others that were watching from a distance. But Mary, Jesus' mother, was there watching her, her son die. Now, how heartbreaking and how difficult, how hard that must have been. And there were other women that had been followers of Jesus, supporters of his ministry that were also there. John, as a disciple, was there right at the foot of the cross. And you can imagine how unhappy they were because Jesus was dying and did die. They saw him, they saw him die. Now, it was interesting that Nicodemus, when Joseph brought Nicodemus along to care for Jesus' body, that he brought 75 pounds of this perfumed ointment and they wrapped Jesus up in the the cloth like was part of the Jewish custom and they, they secured him and then put him in a tomb. I mean, if anybody didn't think that Jesus was dead, he was obviously dead. There was no way that they would actually do all of those things for someone that had just passed out. Jesus had died a real death and he was buried in a tomb. He was laid in the ground. He was dead, but he didn't stay dead. He didn't stay that way. And this is the important part of Resurrection Sunday. This is the part that we uh, need to be shocked and surprised and excited and rejoicing in. Jesus is alive. He is risen from the dead. This is the best news ever. And of course, the all the Gospels tell about different parts of Jesus' resurrection. And I want you to hear it from Matthew chapter 28. And what happened in this part 
as Jesus rose from the dead. It said, early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come. See where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. He has risen from the dead. That is amazing news. This is a wonderful thing that we need to know as part of the gospel. Jesus said it would happen. And his disciples didn't really understand it. They didn't understand what he was saying, even at the Last Supper, when he said he was going to suffer and die, be betrayed. But, you know, when he rose from the dead and they began to understand that all these things that he had said were coming, that there was victory over death in the grave, this is something that that was an amazing part, that they began to get, all of his followers began to get excited about the fact that Jesus had conquered death. Now, victory is an important thing. Let me tell you this very uh, old story from history, actually 1815, when Wellington was fighting in the Battle of Waterloo against Napoleon. It was a great battle and all of England knew that this battle was taking place. But as you can imagine, in 1815, the modes of communication were not as technologically advanced as today. And so in order to communicate what was happening uh, in Europe, they had to send a ship and they had to send a ship back to England and that ship had to send signals and uh, until it could land. And so what happened on the, uh, on the finish of this battle was that the ship moved towards England began to send semaphore signals. Now, they were flag signals. It took a long time to communicate a message. And so while the ship was off the coast, they began to communicate the message of what had happened in the battle. And slowly but surely, they spelled out the letters, Wellington defeated. And then all of a sudden, the weather turned against them and the fog settled down over top of the ocean and over top of the ship. And of course, they couldn't communicate anything more. So at that time, as the signals were transferred on to the next place and the next place, all of England thought Wellington was defeated. However, uh, after some hours and the fog lifted, the ship began to communicate again that Wellington defeated the enemy. Of course, their their defeat and their agony uh, over the defeat turned to joy because they were rejoicing in that Wellington was successful. The battle wasn't lost, the battle was actually won. And if you can imagine on that day, when those women came to the tomb, feeling dejected and defeated, Jesus had died, Jesus was buried, only to discover that the angel rolled back the stone and said, he's not here, he is risen. Their defeat turned to joy. What had been a defeat turned to victory. And wow. What a victory it has been. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Has there ever been such a moment in all of Christian history as the moment that Jesus rose from the dead. You know, if Jesus wouldn't have risen from the dead, we might never really understand the sacrifice he made on the cross. But because he has risen from the dead, everything that he did on the cross, the provision of forgiveness of sin, it became so much more real, so much more relevant, because death has no power over those that have identified with Jesus in the resurrection of life. And so, as Jesus was raised from the dead, we come alongside of him and say, yes, that eternal life, that is what we want. Do you have confidence in the eternal life that Jesus gives? 
because that's what the resurrection is meant to do. The resurrection is meant to help us to understand everything that Jesus has given to us. Jesus overcame death. He overcame uh, the grave. And so many people are afraid of death in the grave. They're afraid of dying. They don't know what will happen to them. The truth is that Jesus has been raised from the dead as really the first fruits of what it means to be raised. And if we have faith in Christ for the forgiveness of our sin, we have faith in Christ also for the eternal life which he will give. And that is, even though this earthly shell, this body will pass away and die one day, our souls are meant for eternity. And God is giving us eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. In fact, the verses that we know so well in John 3, 16 and 17 say this, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. And this is, this is the truth. God wants to give you life. God wants to restore to you what he had always designed, that mankind was meant to have a relationship with him as the father. He was meant to have a relationship in a way that would uh, bring us together. And heaven has been created for all those that would believe in Jesus, all those that would trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of their sin, and they would receive eternal life. I trust that's you today. I trust that you will join me in saying, yes, I believe, I trust in Jesus. The main point of the message today is this. We receive confidence in eternal life through the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus has provided eternal life for you and for me. And we can rise up and say, yes, thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you for what you have done for me. Thank you for what you have given to me. You know, God has sent us a Savior. He has sent Jesus as Messiah. And as we trust in him, we can be confident uh, in the place that we have in eternity that he has granted us eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. What do we do to deserve it? Nothing, really. There's no amount of good works. There's no amount of uh, extra special things that we could do, no amount of money that we could give to earn eternal life. We simply needed to trust in Jesus. We need to believe. Let me tell you this story from uh, back in 2002. There was a student named Denise she was at a college in, uh, in Missouri, and she was taking a student ministry course, and she was coming to her final exam. And of course, everybody in the class was studying, and they were studying so hard for this final exam, they wanted to get a good mark. And so she came into the classroom where the exam was taking place, and everybody was looking over their notes, madly trying to cram in all the extra information so that they could finish off this exam. Now, the teacher came into the room and said, Listen, class, I'm going to go over everything with you. I'm going to review it before we actually write the exam today. And so all the students thought that that was great. Any help from the teacher to get through this exam would help them to get a good mark. And so he reviewed all the things that they had studied, all the notes that they had taken. But they also found that he had added in a few extra things, things that they really hadn't talked a lot about. And he's as a professor, just simply said, well, it's in the textbook. You were supposed to read all of these things and you should know them. And of course, as students, they went, well, uh, fair enough. You know, we were told that. And so they didn't have quite as much confidence after he, he told them that. And he asked them to leave the papers that was the questions for the exam face down until everyone had been uh, distributed and then they could begin the exam. And so the students were all there, they had put all their notes away and were waiting to be able to turn over their paper. And as uh, this student, Denise, tells the story, she said she turned over her paper and there at the top of the page was her name. In, in red letters, it was written there. And then um, all of the questions, it was all, all the information was already filled in. All, all the answers, were written on the page. And she didn't quite understand what, what was happening. And then 
as everybody in the class experienced the exact same thing. Their names were filled in, the answers were filled in. The teacher looked at them and said, today, I want you to know that there are some things that you can only experience. It goes beyond just learning from a book or putting things down on a page. And today, I want you to know that you have experienced grace. That I have filled in all the answers for you. I've filled in your name. You're all going to get an A on this exam because all the answers are correct and they're already placed there under your name. That is grace. You've been given this, this great gift. And then the teacher said to them, one day you're going to stand before God in heaven and your name is going to be written in a book. And it's not going to be written there because of anything that you have done. It's not going to be written there because you're smarter than everyone else. Your name's going to be written there because of the grace of God. Because you've received a great gift. And I want you to appreciate all that God has done for you. All that he has given to you. That is such a great story because we receive life through Jesus Christ. And the resurrection of Jesus reminds us that we have been given a great gift. That we come in to such wonderful grace. And I want you to appreciate that today for yourself. To rejoice in this resurrection life that Jesus has given to each one of you that believe. John 20 verse 30 and 31 says this, The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. Jesus has given you life. Let's appreciate it today. God Almighty, we come to you and we want to thank you for all that you have done. We want to thank you for who you are. And I pray today that there's just an overflowing thankfulness in my heart. I say thank you for you being the Messiah, Jesus. I thank you for being my Savior. And I pray that throughout the congregation, all that hear this message today will just be filled with gratefulness for all that you have done. We bless your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a song called Great Things that just talks about how great uh, God is and all the things that he has done. Will you listen along and worship along with us today? We're so glad that you joined us for this Sunday. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, why don't you just stop and sing these songs because we are one church and one voice singing together.